G'day to all the students all across our great nation who are finishing up their studies this year. I've got a few words to share with you that hopefully will encourage you all as you approach the final weeks of your schooling life. First, a little bit about me. My parents immigrated to Australia when I was just a child because they wanted my brother and I to live in a land where hard work was rewarded and where individual freedom was respected. Although I was only seven years of age, I remember that time clearly. When we arrived, I spoke no English. I only spoke French. As you can imagine, starting primary school was nerve wracking, much more nerve wracking than even the very first time that I spoke in the Senate. But most importantly, to the people of Victoria, the issues that we are experiencing were created by men and women and they can be solved by men and women. We must work together for the benefit of our country and our people. The challenges that we face are many, but we can do something about it. You are in fact doing something about it right now by taking a greater interest in the political process and by ensuring that I was elected to parliament to represent you. You are doing something about it every time you volunteer your time to keep Australia free. To the people of Victoria, together we will make a difference. Together we will stand up. Together we will create change. Together we will make a better tomorrow. And yes, together we will save Australia. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Aussie. Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Uh, Senator Babbitt, that's disorderly. Unable to communicate and being the new foreign kid, it wasn't easy. It was a struggle to be sure, but luckily for me, another boy in the class spoke both English and French. And when the teacher would give us our instructions to complete our work, he'd take me outside into the hallway and he'd translate from English into French. I then complete my work in French, a difficult time for both me and my teacher who had to grade my work in a language that she didn't even understand. Luckily though, I quickly learned to speak and write in English. But those early formative years taught me one thing. They taught me that I could do anything if I applied myself, if I worked hard. They taught me not to be afraid and to believe in myself. I eventually went on to complete a bachelor's degree and I started a very successful small business with my brother. One of the reasons I went into politics was because I couldn't stand by and watch our great country, the country that gives us such incredible opportunity, be torn apart by career politicians who care more about their jobs than doing what is right. I want Australia to remain free, to remain a land of opportunity and to remain a land full of hope for those blessed to be born here and for those lucky enough to be given the chance to make a home here. We cannot take our freedoms or our opportunities for granted. Our way of life is under attack right now from those who would seek to replace equality with equity, capitalism with socialism, unity with division, and freedom with control. I'm in politics because I wanna help preserve the things that make this place so unique in the world and also such a blessing to those fortunate enough to live here. And I think that's the first thing I want to impress upon you here today. I know it's become quite trendy for those in the media and for some of my political colleagues to talk down on our country. They pretend Australia is nothing special or even that it's racist or it's sexist or every other evil they can imagine in their heads. But as you travel, and I'm sure many of you watching this will over the next few years, you will quickly discover that Australia is the greatest nation on earth. Is our nation perfect? Obviously not. No country is. But for all our faults, it's still one of the most incredible places to live on planet 
earth. One of the things I love most about Australia is that talent and hard work are still rewarded. That's not the case everywhere else though. In many places around the world where socialist ideas have taken root, hard work goes unrewarded. But in Australia, if you discipline yourself, if you work hard, if you find a way to provide a product or a service that others want, you will achieve success. And that's important. Don't desire a country in which your reward comes from the government. Never forget, if the government can reward you, they can also punish you. If the government gives, the government can also take. As you leave school, life will have its ups and its downs. I'm sure you all already know that. But I promise you this, in this country, if you stay the course and if you don't succumb to self-pity, just because you have some setbacks, you'll eventually reap a reward. In my own life, I can say that I have learnt the most through failure. It is only through risk and failure that you develop character, that you learn, and that you eventually achieve success. Life is long. It is not a sprint. It is a marathon. So don't become discouraged if you don't get into the university course which you wanted, or if you don't land the opportunity which you were hoping for. And, as I have found, there is always more than one way to get to where you want to go. If the first door doesn't open, knock on another, and another, and another, until you eventually break through. Life favours the persistent. Remember this, even if you are talented, hard work will always beat talent. If you are lazy, you will not get anywhere in life. So always work hard, always put in the hours, take some calculated risks and back yourself. If you do that, you will have everything you have ever wanted in life. There's one more thing I want to encourage you in, and that is to take responsibility for ensuring that Australia remains a free country. There are forces in this nation that want to remake it into a nation where people are divided against one another and in which the ability to be successful or even just to say what you honestly think and believe are no longer tolerated. Don't allow them to make you envious of other people's success and don't allow them to turn you into a victim by insisting you have a right to be upset by words or opinions that you might not agree with. Don't be a spectator in the political process, sitting on the sidelines, merely accepting everything you were told in the media. Don't take the word of elites at face value, even if what they say sounds correct the first time you hear it. Think for yourself, verify things, ask questions, demand answers. Don't just agree with the first thing you hear because it sounds nice. Some of the worst ideas are dressed up in correct sounding words that sound right, but with just a little bit of critical thinking, quickly reveal themselves to be disastrous. God gave you talents and abilities that if you work hard at them, can create a wonderful life for you and the family which you'll eventually create. Never let government take that away from you. And God gave you the ability to think and to speak and to believe. Never allow government to insist that you must think and speak and believe only as they do. Work hard, stay free and never give up. Do those things and I have no doubt your future will be blessed. I hope that's an encouragement to you. All the best for your upcoming exams. I hope and pray for God's very best for each one of you. I'm Senator Bett for the United Australia Party.